What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Family Scuba. Today I'm going to be talking about the Milwaukee Car Ferry and the dive that I did on that wreck uh, last week or two weeks ago. Uh, this is the uh, bridge on the Milwaukee River uh, that leads out to Lake Michigan. It's called the Daniel Hohen Memorial Bridge. It's very cool. I always sit and stare at it while we're uh, uh, going out to the lake. Um, I am diving with AJ Dive Charters. Captain Andrew uh, and his first mate Jim are always uh, very good people. Uh, they operate a top-notch charter business. Um, I've been out with them multiple times. Uh, and it is always uh, a great time. They are very helpful and um, you know, really know their stuff when it comes to the lake. Uh, they are one of um, many, um, at least a handful of dive charters that I'm aware of uh, on the Great Lakes. Um, and uh, you can't really go wrong with any of them, to be honest. If you're not familiar with uh, Great Lakes, diving uh, or the charters uh, that um, can take you out there. Uh, there's AJ Dive Charters. There is um, Yitka, Captain Yitka on, on Shipwreck Explorers. Uh, I ride in Scuba. Um, I believe operates double action dive charters. Uh, they have a couple boats or if not three uh, on Lake Michigan on the Great Lakes. Um, who else? I know I'm missing some, but uh, just Google, you know, Great Lakes Dive Charters and they'll come up. Here we're uh, at the stern. We were doing a double dip on the Milwaukee Car Ferry. Uh, we tied off on the stern uh, initially, and uh, then the plan was to move over to the bow and explore the bow a little bit. Uh, it kind of makes sense to uh, move from uh, the back to the front or front to the back uh, just because it is a, a fairly long boat. Um, it is, uh, I believe, 388 feet long uh, with a 56 foot beam. Um, so it is, it's a fairly, fairly big, big ship. Uh, it was used um, to transport goods across Lake Michigan, um, uh, generally uh, in the form of train cars, hence the name the Milwaukee um, Car Ferry. Um, when it went down, depending on uh, the information um, that you read, it's anywhere from 46 to 52 lives lost. Um, I believe there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of mystery there because uh, some people didn't check in or check. Um, yeah, they never checked in or didn't take their names off of uh, the the roster because they. I suspect they didn't expect to be going out that day, um, and. Um, their names uh, were either on or not on the list. So there was a little bit of confusion there. Uh, that last picture was a picture of the rear, the stern of the boat. It had this, that huge, um, that huge door uh, that was installed, I believe, after the fact to keep the water out. Um, very briefly in this video, I get video of it. You can see it's no longer where it's supposed to be. It's actually bent in like a Z shape, like um, 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 like something hit it uh, in, the, in the shape of a train car, um, you know. So it's uh, it's bent up pretty pretty bad and hanging off of uh, the back of the ship. Um, the theory is that the train cars uh, may have broken loose in the very rough seas that it was out in and uh, they slammed into the back and bent the um, 
that back uh, stern door out out of the way and now it's it's hanging over the edge there uh, you'll you'll briefly see it as I get over there uh, in any case uh, later on in the video I'll actually uh, go into the ship a little bit and um, check out a small area uh, the of the main train car deck uh, which is essentially where I am now but further in further um, about halfway uh, up the boat or in the middle I guess that would be uh, what was on there so when it went down um, I'm going through a list here from the Wisconsin shipwreck website uh, there were two train cars with lumber um, three cars with barley, seven train cars with feed, I'm assuming animal feed, uh, two cars with peas, uh, one car of grits, uh, one of corn, three of salt, one of butter, one of veneer, two of bathtubs. Um, oh, there's another picture of uh, that back stern gate. Uh, Two of bathtubs, I think I just said. Um, one of cheese uh, and one with three automobiles. Um, you'll see quite a bit of uh, tubs and sinks. I don't I mean those all look like sinks to me or tubs. I don't know what veneers are. Maybe that's what you're talking about. But you see a lot of like porcelain. Um, bathroom stuff down there I'm assuming is the tubs uh, but uh, it's hard to really see um, what's in there because of the way the ship collapsed so it, it was a steel hauled um, cargo ship or ferry uh, but the whole the entire upper deck was a wooden it was all wood structure uh, and when it went down um, <clears throat> all of the uh, trapped air expands and essentially breaks it all apart and then once the air uh, escapes everything you know having been broken apart just collapse in on it, collapses in on itself so that's what happened to this ship um, that's why um, as you can see here everything's kind of just collapsed in inward um, that's because of the, as I said, it lost its structural integrity uh, when all of the trapped air expanded and broke everything apart and then um, it all just came in on itself. Looks like that diver dropped something and retrieved it. Um, so this was a somewhat of a solo dive. Um, there was kind of loose buddy system uh, this time around. Um, I think I've developed a reputation of always wanting or needing to dive by myself. Um, maybe that's because uh, early on that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but of course I'm always willing to dive with others, but um, I think that, that reputation has stuck with me and now uh, most people just uh, leave me to my own um, my own plans I guess um, I did go down with two divers that had uh, two technical divers that had uh, doubles there you see them up front there um, very good divers um, but uh, they weren't uh, they weren't too worried about me the majority of the time um, the video you're gonna see here is actually uh, from the two dives we did that day um, I tried to stick with them for the most part on the first dive, and um, that pretty much went my my own direction or my own way on the second one. Um, I didn't plan on doing anything super technical um, at the beginning uh, when we were doing our debrief or our brief. Uh, prior to going out, they asked me if I was going to be doing uh, technical dives, and um, I was under the assumption that I'd be assigned a buddy, so I said no. 
Um, uh, therefore, the expectation is that I was going to be running a fairly recreational profile. So, you know, max bottom times of about 25 to 30 minutes. Or I should say total run times of about 25 to 30 minutes because bottom times um, on a recreational profile would be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 minutes. Uh, in any case, um, that was the end of the first dive. I didn't get a whole lot of video there. Uh, and then this is the beginning of the second dive. Uh, those two uh, those two divers I was with on the first dive were already on their way down. Um, I uh, accidentally turned my camera on while I was uh, trying to get my fins on. So I got all of this footage. Um, I did uh, edit edit it a little bit just to cut out some of those sections where all you were doing was staring at my chest. But surprisingly, it did end up getting some decent video, so I, I left it in. Um, so here I just put my fins on at the back of the boat in and then work my way down. Um, I actually catch up to them uh, as they were uh, just uh, starting to swim off of the bow. Um, I was going to start following them and then uh, I saw what looked like a mast and I didn't recall this ship having a mast so I went I went out and swam the length of it to check it out uh, and then ended up finding a um, fairly large or medium sized fish probably compared to some of the other ones I've seen. Um, medium sized, um, I'm going to butcher this name, Burbot, 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 uh, a fish that to me looks like a brown spotted eel fish looking thing. They're pretty cool. I've been told they're uh, pretty good eating, uh, but I've never had one. Um, but they're usually on these wrecks in Lake Michigan. I've seen some pretty big ones. Uh, anywho, like I said, I started following them down the port side of the bow. I think they were going to go look at the uh, some of the wreckage that's off to the port side near the front. Um, I think I swam through under there several times, so I wasn't um, uh, I wasn't too interested in going over there just yet. Uh, so I went and checked out that um, the mast. At least it looked like a mast. I didn't know this boat had a mast. I'd have to go back and look at the pictures again. Maybe it's... Uh, I don't know. In any case, um, there they are headed over to part of that... Um, I don't know what that is. I think the... Uh, I think it's split open right there. I don't remember. I don't know. I think that's part of the upper decking or the upper structure that was uh, that fallen over the side because there's no hole there that I'm aware of. I know they did cut a hole in this wreck. Um, there's a video of it on YouTube, maybe more than one, um, but uh, I, um, I have not explored it. I've not gone in there yet. Uh, later on in this video, when I go down um, midship into the uh, cargo, the train car uh, deck area, I find some of the grates that um, were on that deck. Um, they were supposed to, I believe, allow some ventilation down into the lower decks. And uh, they were supposed to have covers. Uh, they didn't, so... There's some theory that um, because of the bent rear gate and the um, storm and the waves constantly uh, beating up the ship and uh, throwing water onto the 
the train decks that the, the, the boat actually ended up filling with water because those streets weren't, uh, weren't covered. But uh, they'll, I'll show you them in a, in a little bit. Uh, in any case, there's that burbot. Weird looking fish. He wasn't too bothered by my presence. So I try to get a little bit closer without disturbing him. Pretty cool fish. It was the only fish I saw down there that day. So more about the ship itself. Um, went down in a really bad storm, like I said, in um, 1929. Again, depending on what information you read, it, it's, you know, 46 to 52 lives are lost. Um, the... <coughs> ship wasn't found, actually, for quite a bit. Um, I think it was located um, in 1972. Um, 10 miles off uh, um, or like it's like 7 miles I think off of the Milwaukee coast um, in, uh, it's about 120 feet there roughly and it's always going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 degrees all year long uh, the water below about 90 feet is always 40 degrees in Lake Michigan uh, I've seen it uh as high as like 76 at the surface but when it's that warm at the surface you'll end up hitting probably like two uh, two at least two thermal kinds um, first one's usually somewhere in the um, 20 to 30 foot area uh, and then the next one uh, being somewhere in the 70 to 90 foot area and then it's just cold um, but if you dress accordingly, you're, you should be fine. Uh, the video I posted uh, from Gilboa, uh, we were in 40 degree water for about um, 30 minutes or so, and then uh, max max temp was like 43 for an hour and just under an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, so it can be done, you just have to prepare yourself for it. So this is the front of the ship. I should have swam out further out so, you, you know, so I got a better a better view of it. But um, that wasn't what was on my mind at the moment. Since I had decided to entirely abandon um, the other two divers, since they weren't uh, really looking for me anyway. Oh, here's that cutout of the boat. Uh, you see the main deck on top, and then the trail, the train car decks, and then the lower deck where the engine and uh, I don't know what those things are down there. Maybe boilers. Um, yeah, probably boilers. And then uh, in front of the boilers are the uh, the cabins, the crew cabins. Uh, so hopefully next time I go to this ship, I can get some video of, uh, down there now that I found a, a decent entrance, at least one that I'm comfortable with. Um, I know there are others and knowing that I'm a little bit more comfortable going in there. So you can see that the that uh, part of the hull there is is kind of bent inwards. Um, that's not going anywhere. That's that's pretty much staying there. Uh, but what's cool about this is the the train cars themselves. You see the wheels are completely separated from the train car. 
like that's a whole wheel and axle assembly and it is you know several feet in front of the um, the um, you know the attachment point there um, so imagine how hard those things were being shook around um, you know potentially even um, probably uh, getting thrown up in the air and then drop back down pretty hard to separate them um, I don't know if you noticed there was uh, or maybe it hasn't come up yet but I know I got um, some footage of uh, the leaf springs that support the weight it's essentially the suspension of the train car and uh, they were completely torn off uh, in any case this is um, you can see how the train cars are sitting off the rails off to the side at an angle uh, but uh, I didn't realize that there was these openings here and that goes down to the lower deck so definitely going to go explore that one of these days when I get back out there uh, the 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 grates you saw there, those were the ones that I was talking about. Those I believe are supposed to have covers on them. Uh, they were missing uh, from the entire ship. Uh, none of the entire, I believe the the, the entire um, train car deck did not have a single one of them. So who knows where the ball was dropped there, or why they were missing, or what have you, but. That's uh, one of the big contributors to uh, the sinking of the ship, uh, along with the gate being bent out. Um, there's more of uh, train car wheels, and the you see the uh, the rail system there on the right. Oh, this is where the suspension is. Here's another. just to the right you can see the leaf springs just inside that wheel and you know this was all supposed to have a cart on it and it's all pushed off to the left over there um, it's a little bit uh, you know a little bit concerning swimming underneath those things they have to weigh you know tons and tons and tons uh, but they're being held in place by the side of the hull that's pushed in um, I don't I don't suspect they're going anywhere anytime soon in any case I just kind of work my way uh, back um, towards the uh, towards the stern so there's one of the smokestacks so straight down from there is going to be one of those boilers with a steam engine um, like I said, I, I try to orient myself when I'm when I'm swimming these wrecks because that's one of the ways you navigate a shipwreck is knowing where everything is. Oh, here's those uh, hubs, maybe. Um, is knowing the layout of the ship, and it's not always the same. But I mean, a ship's a ship, and they, uh, you know, they're all kind of built roughly the same um, so knowing the layout is going to be huge in terms of uh, navigation so if you take anything away from this video it's uh, learn the wreck you know do some research beforehand after and progressively um, explore it you know don't don't try going to the engine room on the same or first dive. Uh, it's not not recommended, um, you know, even with um, having multiple navigational tools. It, it's, I find it uh, easier to do progressively or progress um, the complexity of the dive even at the same location. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but um, definitely uh, knowing where you're going and how to get out is, uh, is key when wreck diving. In any case, uh, I made it out 
and I am going back towards the bow and I ran into the other group of divers um, heading uh, heading towards the line to, uh, to exit. I end up going up with them um, and um, let them kind of work their way out before uh, before I made it out so I was the last diver out. Uh, great wreck. Um, it is really silty, uh, so if you do plan on penetrating it, uh, or even if you're just exploring the outside of it, just be mindful. Um, visibility does go away really, really fast if, you, uh, if you're not careful where you're kicking. Um, and if you do plan on penetrating it, obviously do your homework, be trained, uh, have the proper uh, certifications to do so. Fantastic wreck, fantastic people that I dove with. Uh, can't wait to do it again. Thanks for watching.